the thing that I love about you is that you, you, you don't come up with excuses as to why you can't do your batch cooking every week. Like there's just no excuse. I did. I did up until a few months ago. I mean, I, I read all the books. I watched all the movies. I was getting the knowledge. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't that doesn't make you feel better until you stop making the excuses until you start figuring out a way to do it, even when you feel like crap doing it after a while, it does start making you feel a lot better, yes, yeah, totally, and I think you know you've been posting in our in our Facebook group, and I would see these posts that you know you were next to all of your batch food and you just, you were so like, okay, I'm just going to do this thing. And you have a particular challenge when it comes to batching and doing day-to-day stuff. So, so in your particular challenge is that you are in a wheelchair, which makes paraplegic, paraplegic, right. And so that means that that comes with a whole host of challenges. So I want to start by just talking a little bit about sort of how you stumbled onto eating a whole food plant-based diet and the particular challenges that you have and kind of just how you, you know, just, I want to tap into your brain because you're so awesome and just hear it from you, like how, you know, how you do this and, and, and how you're able to, to do this every week and just, you know, show up. So let's start by just, so how did you come across this way of eating? Um, it was about six years or so ago. Um, my former husband had lung cancer. And after he had went through all the chemo and all the radiation, he was sent home with hospice basically to die. And I was talking to one of the ladies at church and her husband had cancer. And they were sending him to a raw vegan that he was trying to do. So we started the juicing. We started the different things. And it helped Jan to be able to get up and at least enjoy his last few months before he passed away. But the thing that really got my attention was how much better it made me feel. I mean, for the first time, I was in my chair 14 hours a day. I was doing things that I'd never been able to do. I was exhausted, but I was able to do them. And I didn't have the normal, I guess, depression that was, yes, I was depressed. You can't be married to somebody for 20 years and not see them dying in front of you. But the all day long kind of feelings that I had had since my accident. I just was feeling, I guess, emotionally better when I ate clean. The problem was, is how much energy it took. And like I said, I started watching the movies. I started reading the books. I came up with things I was going to do. And then I just never really pulled my pants up and did it. I mean, there was things I tried doing. I, after he passed away, we found out I had a pressure sore and I spent over three years on bed rest where you could only be up just a couple of minutes at a time. So I would learn how to peel and cut my vegetables while laying on the air mattress because that was the only way that I could have anything healthy. But the problem was I couldn't, I couldn't stay consistent with it that I, we would have too much sardine. So I was eating vegan, but it wasn't healthy. Gotcha. Or or too many times going out to eat just because too tired to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And when you have a wound, all you hear is protein. Protein, protein, protein. And that's all my doctors would talk about. And that's all the blood work would come through. And I would try to do everything they'd say. And you'd get the blood work back. And you would feel like a complete failure because my readings weren't where they wanted to do. And it gave me stomach cramps all the time. It I was constipated all the time. It just, it was horrible. What were they, what were they feeding you? What did they want you to eat at that time? Oh, tons of meat, cheese, eggs, you know, Mm -hmm. every snack needed to be something like that. And Mm -hmm. 
drinking the um like the protein powder drinks and stuff like that when i would try to tell them yeah but i made up some green juice today and i'm feeling better yeah 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 but this is what you need that's not going to help you i'm like okay i felt i just i couldn't i mean i had a huge wound on my leg i went over you know, over the three years i went through seven surgeries until they finally you know sealed it and it the difference like i said i had that i was getting the knowledge but i didn't have any confidence that i was doing it right because all of my doctors were carrying on about that I wasn't having enough, my protein levels weren't high enough. Mm. And when when I had the flat surgery that healed my leg, and when I recovered from it, Mike's I I had gotten remarried, and you know we knew going into it, he retired same time as we were getting married so when you marry someone who's 62 you know that you're not going to get tons of years together mm. we wanted to make sure that it was enjoying them the most and i didn't want to be in a nursing home you know that i wanted to be able to try to take care of things his blood pressure started going back up and we just we went back to the movies and we went to the different things and I kept trying to follow the recipe books and but none of the recipes would like roll over. You didn't make a cheese sauce and then have it make two meals out of it. Mm. So everything was and I still couldn't I couldn't change my thinking that I was thinking back to when I had two teenage boys at the house and so you make a lunch, you make a dinner. I did nothing but be in the kitchen, but it wasn't, I would see food going bad, so bad that I, I couldn't use, I mean, I think that's one of the things I love most about the meal plan. You go shopping on this day and the next day, you actually use the peppers before they get wrinkly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you use this stuff and, and, you know, we're learning you know, my husband's like, well, when the refrigerator's empty, I said, yes, that means we have to go shopping and we have to start all over. That's so right. it takes tons out of me to do it, but there's been a click in the last month, month and a half, that I'm excited to do it. I'm excited at the end of that to look at that table and say, okay, this is all I accomplished. And I know what we're going to do when we go into town and when I'm tired, instead of us going out to eat now, because I'm afraid I won't have anything left when I get home, I know that of the different meals I have, there's quick ones like soup or there's different ones that I know I can put together, you know, in a little in a little bit longer of a time i can choose which way i want to go but i know that there's going to be delicious food in there that i can put together quickly Mm. it has saved us just so much we're we're not eating out and we live kind of in a small little area there is next to no restaurant that can get anywhere near plant-based we're not even talking about the oil we're just talking about something Healthy. Veggies. I mean, even yeah. most, re- yeah, e- even most restaurants you go to, you get a veggie burger. When you look at it online, you're like, okay, and it only has three types of cheese and two kinds of oil in it. Yeah, that's super common. So, yeah, so that was like in a nutshell, like a very, very condensed version <laughs> of yeah. what you've been through over the past 25 years. So, you you've um, been in a wheelchair for 25 years. Your your husband got sick, and you started eating plant based along with him. And you were amazed how good it made you feel, and then and the switch made you feel like, oh, I can. So at that point, you were able to be in your wheelchair for a longer amount of time without having to get out of your wheelchair. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, so. When you got remarried, your husband, did he 
eat this way at all? Did he know about this way of eating or was this brand new to him? Nothing. Oh no. Everything was brand new, but some of the health concerns that he had, they specifically talked about on Forks Over Knife video. And so he sat down and watched it with me. And like I said, we dabbled with it every now and then. But when his blood pressure started going back up and he knew the side effects of it, and he's like, I, I said, I said, I'm, you see me. I'm looking at this stuff all day long. I know how to cook, but I don't know how. I didn't have the confidence to know I was doing it nutritionally sound. And so I always felt like I was missing things that we specifically needed that was going to take his high blood pressure under control. And just my, I mean, I have to eat, I guess, even at a higher level of anti-inflammatories just to be able to keep my pain and up under control. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's times I would say I have four to six really good hours a day depending upon how hard I'm pushing it, depends upon how much I can do. So I have to make sure that I am trying to get the best stuff in me during that time. Mm. And then in the last couple of weeks, I've started exercising. And, you know, I, I, I know that's making me feel better. And at the same point, it's kicking me in the butt too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because that is one of your biggest challenges, right? Um, being in a wheelchair, it's like you you don't have... It's not like you can be in your wheelchair all day long without getting like sore, right? And having to go to your bed and rest. Is that right? Um, Have you ever heard of the spoon theory? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, It was put out by a lady um, that has lupus. And it had to do with different people that have lupus or RA. If you have some kind of condition. Yeah. That or like you have chronic pain, you get so many spoons in your drawer a day where somebody that is able bodied will not think about I've got to get up in the morning, I've got to have breakfast, I've got to get dressed, you know, shower, all these things. If somebody has this type of condition, you can take most of your spoons away and you haven't even started for the day, especially if you didn't sleep all well the night before. Or just your pain is up of how the thing I think that I've gotten the most out of it, my spoons seem to be bigger now. That I since since you've been eating this way and batching and following the meal plans. Yes. Okay. I seem to have much more strength. Mm -hmm. And it's just as but where before, okay, the first time that I batched, I did question how in the hell am I gonna be able to do this? Because I was completely exhausted. I just couldn't move barely for like two days afterwards. Mm-hmm. But now, there, like I said, there's been times the day before I've had a whole bunch of pain that I thought there's no way. I got excited the next morning to know that I was going to do when I had a plan. And starting first thing in the morning has been the best thing for me of making sure, you know, so I guess that's the thing that's the coolest for me is there are so many people that have given tips of how they make their batching better. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the tips you give, okay, you're getting a rubber mat on the fork, not really a big help for me, going to get tangled up on my wheelchair. Right. (laughs) So, but I can look at the different things though. And even when I made up the one post, there must have been about, 30 responses of people that were telling how they do things that I'm looking at and I seem to be tweaking mine every week to try to get it to where I want it. When I get done with batching for the day, there's still some kind of spoon to do something afterwards that it doesn't feel like this is what I did. But right now, even if that's what I do at the end of the time, I'm not, I've made enough little tweaks. I'm not hurting the way I did in the beginning Mm. that I'm tired, but it's like, okay. And, and I guess the biggest thing with going plant-based is the recovery time Mm. that I can have a really bad day, but yet the next day I can get up and still do something. 
and not need two days to recover from that bad day. Mm -hmm. So that has just impressed, just in made my life wonderful. Yeah. So less, so, so less pain and less length of pain, the amount of pain that you feel, it's like you bounce back quicker. Yeah. So what are some of the tweaks that you have made in your batching to help with this? Um, I have a small counter where I have like my Instapot, my blender, stuff like that. And there never seemed to be enough room or anything like that. I've taken a card table and I've kind of put it behind me to where all I have to do is turn around. That's where I have my cutting board and all my measuring spoons and all those kind of things to where it's, it's close. And like at the beginning, before I get started, I will try to get out as many of the utensils that I need. Because I have a big island in my kitchen. And like I said, the one that I was just circling and circling and circling. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, something has got to stop. That's, you know, I know I have to circle it if I have to go over to the stove to do something. Yeah. But it's trying to organize my stuff better. And having it closer at hand, so I'm not having to make as many, you know, wheels or rolls, steps, however you want to say it, to go get the stuff that I need. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's that a big has one. Been a big improvement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So let me ask you this: How? So a couple of things. One, I want to touch on something that you mentioned. So when you were on the air mattress and you were like. Th with the, those three years that you were you were having that um, sore on your leg, you were on an an air mattress because you were on bed rest pretty much. But I heard you say that you would prep and chop things while on that air mattress. So I, I need to revisit that because you kind of you skimmed over that, and I'm thinking she, this woman prepped in in while she was on an air mattress on bed rest. Like, are you kidding? That you deserve like a crown on your head right now. So just can you touch on that real quick before I go any further? Well, there was times I started putting the cutting board on my chest and I was trying to do it this way. But so I kind of learned to roll over on my side. I had to be picky. I, I couldn't I could do my my carrots and my apples and all that kind of stuff for my juicing. But I learned I'm not going to try something really juicy like a pineapple or, or something like that. But if I had to cut onions and peppers or, you know, zucchini, anything that I was cooking up for a meal that if anybody was in, because, um, well, he was my fiance then, but he was always at work and gone. My son was in college. So if anybody stepped into my house, it was, okay, bring me the bowl and you know, the peeler, the this, or there was times I went up and got it, but I was supposed to really limit the amount of time that I was in my chair. So mm -hmm. it, if I, the more I learned to do laying on my side, it wasn't easy. It wasn't the cleanest at times. Just I would, broccoli is terrible when you're cutting it into little pieces. It was flying everywhere, <laughs> but it... <laughs> Broccoli is messy when you're cutting it on a counter. I mean, I can't imagine doing it in, in bed. I mean, honestly, that's, I mean, you're so determined. I mean, <laughs> but I make such a mess on yeah. batching day. Yeah. You know. You and everybody else. I mean, after batching, my kitchen looks like a bomb went off and Luann is in charge of, uh, dishes as well. And so, you know, if we're doing all this work, we need a little help, especially since they're going to be eating the meals. So, um, and it's just once a week, thank goodness. So I was going to ask about your husband. So since you said that his cholesterol started to get a little bit higher before you jump back, his blood pressure, oh, his blood pressure. Yes. so has he noticed any changes since you started really going, going at this again? Well, I know he was able to get off of his blood pressure medicine. So awesome. all of the side effects and stuff like that that went along with that that made life miserable are gone. So, you know, he Fantastic. You know, he says, he said, I hear what the others say and everybody looks at me like I've been a factory worker for all of my life. How can I give up meat and cheese? And he's like, you guys are giving up rice and potatoes. And I'm thinking <laughs> you're nuts. 
<laughs> he's like, I am, I am okay. <laughs> the cheese. But he's like, you're not coming after my taters. It's just not happening. That's hilarious. And that's a really, you know, that's a really good comeback, actually. Like, you're crazy for giving up rice and potatoes. What? Yeah, because they're probably eating lots of meat and, and cheese and just doing the no carb thing. So that's brilliant. And he feels good. Oh, yeah. He said that he, um, no, well, being off the, you know, the concrete floors at work helped him feel a lot better there. But, you mm-hmm. know, he has more energy and is able to do things. And like I said, you know, if, if the food didn't taste good, then no, he wouldn't do it. Right. Yeah. I I think that's a lot of people. I mean, the food has to taste good because we have to eat every single day we have to eat. And if the food just doesn't taste good, like it's going to become a drag because eating is such a big part of our life. So I think he's right. And um, that's how most people feel about it. So you seem to have gotten like your groove now. And um, I, I see you posting in Facebook and I love it every time you do because there there are people definitely out there who want to make a change for a lot of reasons and they just can't get in their kitchen and do it. And these are people that, you know, aren't in a wheelchair and, you know, really it seems like, you know, they should be able to, to do it. So what do you say to somebody who wants to batch cook and just hasn't found the motivation to do it yet? Um, Well, you can, can, I mean, usually if they want to do it, it's because of a health concern. So it's like, if you feel like crap, this is going to make you feel better. And the only way you can read about it, you can watch the movies, you can do all the things I did, but until you get it in your body, and until you get it in your body consistently, you are not going to feel better. You cannot eat clean on Monday and then live on garden burgers the rest of the week and expect to feel better. I mean, you have to do it consistently for your body to start repairing some of the stuff that's in it. The damage that you've done to it for you to, you know, repair it. You didn't do it in a day. You're not going to fix it in a day. Totally right. Totally right. And I and I see that a lot. And I've said that same thing. And I see that with people who are really wanting to to lose weight, and they get disappointed because they haven't lost the amount of weight that they think they should in a certain amount of time. And it's like, hey, you know, it's like it didn't happen overnight that you got to where you are. It's not going to happen overnight to get back. And so I think that that's spot on. I love your advice. And I want to ask you. Um, what are like some of just the the biggest changes that you have noticed in your life because of doing your batching really consistently? I feel better. I mean, I feel better physically, but I feel better mentally Mm -hmm. that I just don't have that cloud hanging over. You know, I don't, you know, I'm sorry with the way that my leg had surgery on it, we have to stack it up on nine pillows at night for me to be able to sleep and get off of that spot. You can't wake up in the middle of the night. You can't wake up and me not, my injury was, it was supposed to be, a, it is classified as complete, which means it's never supposed to come back, but they also never saw any damage on the spinal cord. So in the beginning, it was, well, maybe it just had a stroke and it's going to wear off. Mm-hmm. And I would try and I would try and I would try, you know, to move my leg every morning and have to go through what it was like losing my legs all the time. And it finally had to be, I'm here for a purpose. And I had two very small kids that couldn't handle watching me go through that all the time. I don't feel that weight you know I don't try to move my leg in the morning I just know okay what are you going to do today I just I guess it's really hard I just feel so much better mentally mm-hmm. and that had has been the change since I've been eating better and not not hurting all the time mm-hmm. I mean I have more energy I just I'm so much happier now mm-hmm. than when I was eating, do I miss not being able to go out as easy? Yeah. I mean, that's hard because most of my friends think I'm insane for doing this. 
you know, they say, I have a lot of them that are doing the keto. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to be me ever. Mm. I, I'm just, mm. because my pain is lowered so much. It's yeah. everybody's like, well, don't you crave? And I'm like, you know, I don't. It, it, I mean, in the last few months, I, I don't care to have meat. I don't care to have those kind of things. I can sit with you and watch you eat a burger. All right. No, it, it's just not what I want anymore. But yeah, you found what works for you. You found what works for your body and you feel good. And so no reason to go back to it, you know, and you are, and, and you did that and you do that every single week and you do that while you're in a freaking wheelchair. That's what you do. I mean, you were in your bed at one point chopping broccoli. Like that is so like that level of badass is like, you know, sky high. And you just have, you have my respect woman. You do. And I don't think you realize how encouraging you are to other people. Because honestly, if, if you can get in there in your kitchen and do it every week, anybody can. So I know that you you don't think that you don't think of yourself as inspiring, but I'm telling you, you um, you're going to help a lot of people, and you already well, do. Like I said, I I like the the exercise person that I'm kind of doing his YouTube videos and stuff like that. And it still blows my mind. He's a quadriplegic and he is a fitness instructor. And yeah. I'm like, just, and to see the things that he does, I mean, he kicks my butt up one side and down another. And I'm like, oh, hell no. You, you have less than me. There's no way I have to figure out how to do this exercise or whatever. But I love his be stronger than your excuses. And everybody can come up with an excuse and yeah. you can come up with it all day long. But in the end, how is that helping you? How is it helping you put what your body is craving for inside of you? You know, the donut may look good, but really, what is it? How is it? Your body's not craving that. You may think you want it, but it's not going to feed one cell in your body. True that. Uh, True that. I mean, I, I really couldn't say it. Um, better myself you just <laughs> you, that's exactly it that's exactly it and I think just by seeing and just like how you are so inspired with your fitness instructor same thing when, when people see other people who have even greater challenges than themselves doing it without excuses like that motivates them to to put down the excuses because a lot of times I don't think people even realize they're doing it and and sometimes they need a reality check and so I think for a lot of people, this talk will be a reality check for them. And I know for a fact that you are going to help a lot of people. And I just like, I bow to you. I think that you are an amazing woman. I think that you are so badass and it's contagious. Your attitude is contagious. I see it in the Facebook group and I just see how people are so um, drawn to you and what you have to say. I was surprised about that too when the kind of the first time I did it and showed myself next to the food and that to see the reaction that some of them came up with and, and the people that, well, I need to stop making any excuses and do it. It's like, okay, I don't get me being inspirational, but it's like if it helps them get up and get moving, it's, you know, they're the one that's got to live inside their body, not me. I. But so it's kind of, you know, there's times that it's just a picture of the food like everybody else. And then there's the ones that everybody's taking a bite. I'm like, yeah, I'm just not really comfortable taking a bite while I'm taking the <laughs> picture. But I'm like, I'll sit next to it. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. And, you know, all inspiration is, is helping other people. That's it. To be inspirational, all you have to do is, is be exactly who you are. And if you share that with people, that's what it is, you know? And uh, that's, that's what I found over all of these years. And that's, and that's certainly you. So we don't have to put a, a label on it. But I know that by just being you and by just speaking your truth and sharing a bit of your story, I know that other people will, get, um, will, will benefit from it. So um, is there anything else that you want to share before we wrap up? It's a hard one day, but then like you said, you're done for the week. 
I'm able to enjoy my life. I'm doing stuff around the house. I'm, you know, being more involved in community service. I'm doing things that make me feel good, but I have the strength to do it because of the food that I'm eating that's helping me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you really, you know, hustle that one day and prep a bunch so that, you know, the rest of the week, it's going to be minimal. And so you can do other things that you would normally, you know, you know, think, and you would normally be in the kitchen and now you're, you know, it frees up time. So you can enjoy your grandkids and, and play games and, um, you know, do things. So I think it's, it's, it's awesome. And, I, I love, I just, I love talking to you. And I just, I really think you're so kick-ass. I really do. <laughs> well, I think you are for everything that you set up through the page and how it's always positive. It's, you know, there are so many people that have questions about what to do. And it is kept very positive. You know, that it's like they're not going to judge somebody if they want a piece of meat or something like that. Or if your family's coming and you are asking what to feed them, how to do it, you are making the steps right there because you're finally, you know, I finally started taking control of my house and saying, okay, if I'm putting this together, it's going to be plant based. This way of eating, I mean, it, it's. And this way of cooking, it's like everybody has their their challenges, obviously some more than others, but it's like everybody has to make it work for their life and whoever else is in their family as well. And so it's like it's always going to be slightly different and there's definitely room to tweak and to and to make it your own. You know, and I think that you're a really good example of that, of doing it how it's going to work for you and for your family. And so um, that's it. I think you're right. And uh, keep keep us posted in the Facebook group. And thank you again for doing this and for allowing me to share it. And uh, I, I look forward to it going out. Okay. Thank you. Have, Have a good awesome evening. weekend. Okay. Bye. bye.